TV. And welcome to Next Week Today in St. Thomas Elgin. I'm your host, Kate Burns Gallagher. We are here at the Elgin County Heritage Center at 460 Sunset Drive, and many thanks to Elgin County for hosting us once again. Up first is Jason Clark, who is the Fire Training Coordinator of the Elgin Middlesex Training School, Fires Training School, right? That's correct. I yep. think I got it all together. Yep, the, the Elgin Middlesex Regional Fire Training Center. Okay, yeah, see, that's a really big title. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How are you, and welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. You bet. So tell us a little bit about your role with the school. So I'm the uh, fire training coordinator for the Elgin Middlesex Regional Fire School. Uh, so part of my job is uh, lining up courses, uh, working along with our different uh, municipal partners and uh, getting the training on the ground. That's fascinating. And the fire school is pretty new to the region too. So that's, that's what, right. what's the, the fire school all about? So in 2021, uh, through a partnership with the County of Elgin and the Ontario Fire College, the Elgin Middlesex Regional Fire School was created um, to uh, become a regional training center. Great. And where do recruits come from for the fire school? So recruits come from uh, both Elgin and Middlesex and surrounding areas. Uh, last year in our 2024 recruit program, we had approximately 15 different municipalities within, uh, within that group and approximately 60 uh, recruit firefighters. Great. And then that group all graduated right before the summer, was it? That's correct. They graduated in June of uh, 2024. And um, the school, is it paid firefighters, volunteer firefighters, combination? Of they the are an on-call or a volunteer background. Mm -hmm. uh, they are hired through their municipality uh, and then come to us in the recruit class in January. Um, that recruit class runs for approximately six months and then they, uh, they return back to their, uh, their municipality as on-call or volunteer firefighters. Great. So in order to come to the school, you have to be recruited by a municipality first? They are hired but through a municipality first and then they come to us through, uh, through that municipality. Fascinating. So during the course of the program, uh, being at the school, what do they learn and experience? Uh, so a lot of fire behavior, fire suppression, um, hose management, um, a lot of teamwork and team building skill sets as well. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're getting out of their comfort zone a little bit, working with uh, ground ladders, power tools, uh, the jaws of life, auto extrication, things of that nature. So they are, uh, they are getting a, a really big skill set when they're taking their, uh, their recruit program. Fascinating. And what is the time commitment like for the school? Uh, for the school, they're usually looking at about uh, a weekend per month uh, with a very um, in-depth online portion as well. Mm -hmm. And that usually uh, happens for uh, about uh, six months and six months in total. Oh, great. And then you graduate. And, and then they working. graduate and then they're, uh, they're certified and they have the, uh, the same certifications as uh, a firefighter in Ontario. Oh, fantastic. So um, the fire school or no sorry the fire building on 73 with the tall tower right is there some training that happens out of that facility as well or where does it, where does all the magic happen that's the Ma that's the malahide uh, fire station you're talking yeah, about yeah. fire station so uh what's unique about our fire school is we don't really have one brick and mortar, mortar facility okay. so we do operate within both uh, middlesex and the algon counties and we'll go to our malahide fire stations um central algon fire stations strathroy caradoc and all over uh, and they'll host the training. So the school does move around from uh, course to course. Oh, that's great. So you get to experience a whole bunch of different fire stations and Absolutely. buildings. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, fantastic. So um, how often are intakes brought in or new recruits brought in? New recruits come in every, uh, every January is when our uh, program starts. Um, and since uh, our recruit program in 2022, we've graduated about 189 uh, recruit firefighters in those, those last several years. So. Uh, we can handle about 80 recruits over the course of two classes that run simultaneously. Fantastic. So if people are interested in becoming a volunteer firefighter and then eventually coming to the training school, how do they get involved? Absolutely. I think uh, one of the uh, best places to start is starting with your local fire station. Um, if you're in a municipality that has an on-call or volunteer fire uh, department, uh, reach out to your local um, uh, municipal uh, building and and uh, find out the process that way. Mm -hmm. And then from there, uh, they can visit uh, elgincounty.ca, our we're fire school uh, website's up there, and we're also on Facebook. And uh, they can email fireschool at elgin.ca. Wonderful. And in Elgin County, who, which municipalities have on-call or volunteer departments? Um, so there's uh, Elmer, uh, Malahide, 
uh, Central Elgin, and you're testing me to, to, know, to name right? them all. Uh, Bayham, pretty much everybody except uh, St. Thomas. The city of St. Thomas has a uh, full-time uh, fire service. Oh, fantastic. So it, any community in Elgin County, you can go in and volunteer. Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Jason. Really appreciate your time. It was my pleasure. Thanks so much. We'll be right back on Next Week Today in St. Thomas, Elgin. October 5th, 2014, my daughter was hit by a train. She was walking along the sides of the tracks and it shattered her world. <laughs> my dad was a railway porter. It was just about the only job a black man could get. But he had big plans for us. <gasps> Music would be our ticket out of poverty. I knew we couldn't afford that piano, so I practiced twice as hard. Nice, Daisy. Okay, Oscar, let's hear it. Turns out, I wasn't half bad. Then I found jazz, or it found me. It wasn't all easy, though. I faced a lot of hate, but I found my stage. They call me the man with four hands. Well, I don't know about that, but let's see how far this ticket takes me. From Montreal to Carnegie Hall and far beyond, Oscar Peterson became one of the most recorded and celebrated jazz musicians of all time. on next week today in St. Thomas Elgin. We're now joined by Shelly Chowns, the VP of Construction and Development for Doug Terry Homes. Welcome to the show, Shelly. Thank you for having me, Kate. You bet. So Project Tiny Hope, the Blitz, it happened. It was so fantastic. Tell us a little bit about how that project got started. Sure, I'd love to. Project Tiny Hope started as an idea of Doug's many years ago. And if you know anything about Doug Terry Homes, you know giving back to the community is part of our DNA. This is our 70th year in business in the St. Thomas area. And so we couldn't think of a better way to mark that occasion by doing Tiny Hope for the community. So Tiny Hope is a project of 40 small homes um, that we are doing with some partner builders in the area. And it's to address the need for more affordable homes in the region. Incredible, that's great. I, and Doug Terry Homes has always been such a huge community partner, that's for sure. And so the Blitz was eight homes in 72 hours. Eight homes in three days. Um, we have a long history of doing Blitz building within our organization. This is our fifth Blitz. Wow. But by far it's our biggest and probably our most challenging because this time we invited builder partners in to uh, do the Blitz building with us. So uh, normally it's us organizing ourselves and our subtrades, and this time we brought partners into that, so the logistics and the communication was that much more challenging. But in total, we saw probably 400 volunteers through the site in three days, um, and we've divided, we had divided them into teams, and uh, it took a lot of planning and organization, but uh, with the entrepreneurial spirit of everybody there and a goal of getting it completed, it was a smash. That's incredible. And what goes into planning and coordinating something like that with 400 volunteers and so many builders and partners? I can say a lot of expertise. Um, this isn't a project for the faint of heart, um, starting with determining what the construction schedule looks like in order to build a home in three days. Everything needs to happen very quickly. And then matching up skill sets to those tasks and making sure that everything is there on site. And so the strategy that we used was to create almost like a Lego kit mm -hmm. for each of the builders. And so we've been busy assembling all of the parts and pieces that each team needed to put their house together in a big shipping container that is right beside the house. And starting on day one, the doors open and away to the races they go. We gave each team a coach. 
uh, to make sure that they were able to uphold those high Doug Terry standards. Every one of the tiny homes is built to a net zero standard. And so we had um, a lot of skills and expertise. Everybody, I would say, uh, doing their very best, working quickly. Um, we had a lot of fun doing it, uh, despite the weather. Um, it always brings an extra element of challenge when there's rain, but it certainly didn't dampen any spirits. That's incredible. That's great. And you mentioned all the other builder partners. Who were a couple of the builder partners that were on site with you? Mm -hmm. So we we're very happy to have uh, a great team of builders working with us this time. Some that we've already worked with in some of our Doug Terry developments. So we had uh, DHP, uh, Woodfield, Wastel Builders. We had a team from the local Winmar Group. We had Collier Homes. But a great team of yeah. community partners and builders. Absolutely. Yeah. Very experienced builders, very experienced tradespeople. Um, we really, this is different than a, um, this is different than a build where you, where you get volunteers from the community to come out and help. And those are very fun too and very worthy projects. But because of the speed that we're doing this one at, we needed the best talent. Yeah. And so we brought builders in, we brought in their sub-trades and, and we worked together on it. That's incredible. And what does Project Tiny Help mean for the community? So there has been an ongoing need for um, appropriate, affordable, um, safe housing in not only our community but across Canada. And especially since COVID, that has really reached almost a crisis level. And so as community builders, we knew we had a role to play here. What we expect Tiny Home to bring to this community is safe, dignified housing for um, adults and families, um, an opportunity for them to live in a supportive community. The project will not only include 40 tiny homes, but there will be a programming um, house in the middle, a community gathering spaces where those residents will have access to classes, um, things like uh, resumes and cooking and life skills and so it's really um, a way of integrating uh, a need in the community into an existing neighborhood as opposed to segregating them mm -hmm. and uh, showing other municipalities that tiny homes are a viable housing option for affordable housing and this can look something different than just shipping container homes or um, shed kits like we've seen in other places. That's incredible. Well, thank you and to your team at Doug Terry Homes for making this happen. What a great community project. You're very welcome, and thanks for having us. You bet. We'll be right back ne on Next Week Today in St. Thomas, Elgin. I was born and raised in Musqueam First Nation territory by my mother, who spoke Hunt Kaminam to me. As a child, I ceased using my mother tongue as to use any language other than English was considered not being Canadian, so I was told. The old people came to me in a dream and reminded me of who I am and where I come from. I have reawakened. My roots are strong and I'm no longer a silent speaker. My language tells me where I am from. It defines me and guides me to teach others to learn and understand our culture and tradition. A gift for those in the present and the unborn generation. What was lost is found. What was asleep has awakened. My blood is here and I am complete. I have returned home. Today, I helped a senior find transportation to an important medical appointment. Today, I helped a new mom find virtual programming so she didn't feel so isolated. Today, I helped someone understand new government supports. Every day, 211 navigators connect Canadians to critical government and community programs and services. 211. Help starts here. on Next Week Today in St. Thomas Elgin. We are now joined by local author Alex Wilson. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> you bet. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm 36 and I had my son almost two years ago in December. Um, 
I was a PSW and makeup artist for a long time, and when I had him, I wasn't going back to work because of daycare. There's none, so <laughs> I'm still on the list. And um, yeah, so this is where I'm at. My life, I've traveled a lot and just kind of done that, and now I'm a mom, so relearning. That's great, everything. that's yeah. great. Uh, so what inspired you to write this incredible book, Welcome Back to St. Thomas? Um, it was always a dream of mine. I've talked about it for years. And um, once I had Will C, I like, was kind of lost and just refiguring everything out. And I was writing a bit and just decided to follow through with something to show him that anything's possible. So I did that and started with this book, just kind of watching the population of St. Thomas grow. and wanting to give it a little honor, so. Right, yeah. oh, that's really neat. So um, the book is a, an homage to the city, really. Um, yes. What inspired you, you mentioned your son inspired you to write it, but without any spoilers, tell us a little bit about the story itself. Um, it's, it's based in the future for us, because the plan is to eventually move up by the water up north, and that's where I want him to kind of grow up, but this is where we started, and I wanted him to know how important it is to come back and visit your friends and family and just have all the memories and just how important they are for later in life. Right. Yeah. And, and you hit some key highlights too of the city. Did. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The elephant is mentioned in there because he's one of my first memories and we sl like went sledding a lot in town in a, in, on Chestnut Street and just a lot of different places that like really hit home. I put my grandparents hardware store in there which was Medlands Pro Hardware and that one was really important to me and my family. So. Just wanted to call out to them because they're both gone now, so we added them in there watching us. And yeah, it's just all my favorite mm. memories of this town. Well, and you really truly have to have lived here for some time to know about the Chestnut Street oh, yeah. Toboggan Hill. That right? seems to be the one that people are like, oh, so it might blow up now. Maybe there'll be lots of people there. Right. <laughs> I've exposed it. Way to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. So, um, the, the illustration's absolutely brilliant as well. Who's the illustrator of the book? Um, this is Matt Dunham's work. He, uh, he works for Stay True. He's a tattoo artist. I've known him for 10 years. I used to work with his partner. And while I was looking for someone to do this for me, I was like, you know, that's what he does. He takes your, like, your ideas and he brings it to life. So I took him all of my little sketches and my ideas, and he just he knew exactly what I was looking for. And he nailed it. Like, yeah, he was, yeah, he's really brought it together for me, so. It, and it's such, un well, not unusual, but much different illustrations, right? Because yeah. it's coming from the, I guess, maybe that tattoo artist background. Yeah, it almost has a Simpsons vibe to it, which is yeah. super important, because that was, we grew up watching it and <laughs> still, re like, reference it all the time, so. That's great. Yeah. Don't have a cow man, right? Exactly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he was great to work with, and I recommend him any time because, yeah, he's awesome. That's great. And now I got to meet you at Lockwood Books, where the launch of the book happened yes. um, over the course of the summer. Uh, where can people get the book uh, and find a copy of it so they have their own little piece of Welcome Back to St. Thomas? So it's available on Amazon, Indigo, um, Lakewood Books, and or Lake House Books in Port Stanley. It's not at Lake or Lockwood right now, and I'm just kind of actually in the middle of looking for a couple more stores to put it in St. Thomas just to move it around for marketing and mm -hmm. I have a bunch that I am hoping to do the Christmas market the Hortons one so I want to sell it at a few markets as well oh, so great. Yeah. so people if you're at the market then they'll be able to get access to a signed copy maybe. yeah absolutely and I sell them for a little bit cheaper straight through me as well with no tax so oh great at the market for that yeah oh that's wonderful yeah so um, online Amazon uh, Indigo yeah. and um, at the Christmas markets, keep an eye out. Yes, and it's in the library as well, and it, they're gonna put it in the story walk for October. So it will be through Pinafore Park, so you can see it there too, which I'm pretty excited about. That's so. incredible. Mm -hmm. Oh, that'll be great. Yeah. Great. Well, Alex, thank you so much for your time today. It's a pleasure to have you on the show, and we wish you the best of luck with selling your book. Awesome, thanks for having me. Thanks. We'll be right back on Next Week Today in St. Thomas Elgin. This is a brain in urgent need of mental health care. But because three out of every four Indigenous people experience racism in health care, she may not get the help she needs. Become an ally. Rise above racism in health care. 
Leonard Thompson. 13 years old, diabetes mellitus, 65 pounds. Starve the child to let them live. The treatment's as cruel as the disease. It's a death sentence. Dr. Banting. This could be it. He's the first to receive this trial. But will it save him? It's not pure enough. So we try again. And again. And again. Before the discovery of insulin, diabetes was a death sentence. Banting, Best, Collop, and McLeod's breakthrough has saved millions of lives. Leonard Thompson's was the first. week today in St. Thomas Elgin. We are now joined by Earl Taylor and Annette Severa from the Downtown Development Board. Welcome to the show, you two. Thanks for having us again. You bet. So coming off the heels of the very successful Oktoberfest weekend, we are now talking all things Halloween, my absolute favorite time of year. <laughs> Downtown Prowl, what are we up to for 2024? 2024 is going to be the best one yet. Hopefully, mm -hmm. yes. as long as the weather cooperates. But we've been building, like you said, we've been building this event over the last six eight, years. eight years. Yeah. We had two years of COVID interruption, but right. six years of success. So, and that's got some numbers that are gonna just be staggering. But yeah, we're definitely anticipating a phenomenal turnout again. Wonderful. And what are those numbers sounding like, Annette? Well, in 2017, that's when it started, and it was brought forward to the board by um, Ian and Kimberly Gillespie from Oh My Fur and Whiskers. Mm -hmm. And we thought we'll bring, we'll try it and see how it works downtown. Mm -hmm. So at that time, uh, we had 32 businesses that signed up and we had about 300 participants. And then um, 2020 and 2021, uh, we were closed Man. for COVID. But in 2022, we had 42 businesses, about 700, 500 participants and 11 of them completed the whole street. So we go from Stanley all the way to First Ave. Wow. Yes. So in 2023, it was amazing. There were 84 businesses. And yeah. depending on where your business was, you got either between 800 to 1,100 kits. Incredible. So currently now for 2024, we have right now 52 businesses already signed up to participate in the pro. That's incredible, that's yeah. great. And what day is it this year? Saturday, October the 25th. Right. Oh, okay. Five o'clock, it's always a Friday before Halloween. Yeah. Okay. Just an, another event, but it runs from five o'clock to eight o'clock. Yeah, great. And I remember last year the weather was in the favor and it was packed. But if yes. you remember last year, Talbot Street was under construction. It just got almost complete, oh. but the street lights had not arrived yet. Okay. And it was dark <laughs> downtown. Gotcha. So we hired, hired. We had some volunteer students that came along and helped us at the crossings. So when bought them those red wing me in airplane things, you know, to oh, yeah. uh, help kids get across the street. And uh, volunteers again this year. What do we got? A, a half a dozen or so again this year? Yes, we do. That are going to help us at, at a few of the crosswalks. And they, they get their volunteer hours, and the kids love to help. Right, so. Fantastic, that's yeah. great. So when people are participating in the Prowl, there's a passport yes. and then you've got a sign. So tell us a little bit well, about the passport and um, what they're looking for. You're gonna see these signs in the windows of our downtown businesses. 
uh, just anticipating that the pumpkin prowl is coming up. And then maybe a week or so ahead of schedule. Yeah, about two weeks before we'll drop these off. These things go up in the window. So the very first year we did this, we had people contacting us, what's the pumpkin for? What's the <laughs> pumpkin for? This is the greatest piece of advertising that we could put out there. We do social media, of course, and our website, downtownpumpkinprowl.ca, and through our uh, downtown development board uh, Facebook page and that. But when people see this in the window, they know how many are participating. So yeah, we'll be getting those out a couple weeks ahead of schedule. Great. And if you're interested in bringing your children downtown, do you need to register? What do you need to do to bring kids downtown? Uh, no, you just go on our website and print off the passport. And that's basically all you need to do. And then you can go along Talbot Street and um, into all the businesses that are on the passport. And they will sign it and probably give them a ca some candy and then send them on to the next one. Great. They will be getting candy. Yeah. <laughs> they will be getting candy. <laughs> I love when it. When this first got, it took off like crazy a couple of years ago and people prepared for, you know, you know, to and buy candy, prepared for two or three hundred kids. And when a thousand show up at your door, I'll tell you, there were uh, relays to the, to the grocery store and back <laughs> to get more candy. So we try to prepare our downtown merchants to say, at least a thousand people be prepared for that. But yeah. Yeah, phenomenal. They, so the passport, the businesses will sign the passport, and then you turn that into the last business that you are at. So if you've gone to 20 of them and you're done, you're tired for the night, just give it to the business owner, and we will come by. Annette, that's her job. Yeah. <laughs> we'll come by the Tuesday after and pick them all up, and we put them into a draw. So they get some downtown dollars. We need to have those people come back. Yes. and visit the businesses because we've heard from people say oh I didn't know that business was there mm -hmm. well these dollars will hopefully bring these uh, families back downtown so the, the prizes include carry on <laughs> <laughs> fifty dollars in downtown dollars and there's uh, seven of them oh fantastic seven bucks. yeah great so you have to complete the passport to whatever extent you can yep. drop it off at the last business and it qualifies you for one of those fifty dollar gifts or yep. Yep. downtown dollars yeah. And then uh, there is another prize package for if you take a picture of your kids, deliver them to us, put them up on our Facebook page. Um, we will select randomly somebody from our Facebook um, page and they'll get us another package of downtown dollars. Great. So Friday, October 25th from mm -hmm. 5 to 8 p.m. Yes. Exactly. Yep. Wonderful. We can't wait to see you there. I, I know I'll be bringing my son. <laughs> Free candy and a trip downtown. Those are his two favorite things. <laughs> there are kids that come back every year just to get their picture with me in my suit. Yes. And last year we had a young kid that came back in a suit identical to mine. Oh, they were ready. That was hilarious. It was, I love it was something that. to see. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, thanks so yeah. much for being on the show. Really appreciate thanks it. Thank you. Can't wait. Us. Thank you. Cheers. That wraps up our show for next week today in St. Thomas Elgin. Make sure to get out there, support local business, and support our local community events. Until next time, I'm your host, Kate Burns Gallagher. Connect with us by visiting our website or email us at comments at rogerstv.com. Sports fans know Sundays are for football. That's why you need NFL Sunday Ticket. With NFL Sunday Ticket, Rogers customers get every live game every Sunday afternoon all season long. Follow your favorite teams and players live in HD. Order NFL Sunday Ticket and get up to 200 regular season games. Rogers Ignite TV customers say NFL into your voice remote. This is a perfectly healthy child. What's unhealthy are birth alerts, a racist practice that may stop this indigenous mother from going home with her newborn. Become an ally. Rise above racism in healthcare. 
On this week's episode of Flourish and Flow, I'm joined by Stephanie Nevins, owner of Restorative Health here in Tilsonburg. What are a few things we covered on your episode? A few things we covered were my journey into the wellness field and healthcare and how to get connected in the community. You can catch your episode.